But then I got more into fragrances and I started using that as a room spray. And that's when I knew like, girl, it's time to get rid of that. You have a problem. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my massive fragrance declutter. Whew, it was interesting. So if you guys would like to know why I got rid of so many fragrances and which ones those were, then please keep watching. So guys, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week. I talk about fragrance, makeup, skincare, fashion, luxury, lifestyle, basically all the things I love in life. Liking really helps to boost my channel to the YouTube world, so I would really appreciate it. Let's get into this video. I got rid of probably 25% of my collection a few months ago. I was talking with one of my friends one day and I just felt like, ugh. And I get like this pretty, not often, but like if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you would know that years and years ago, I got rid of all of my luxury shoes just because they weren't serving their purpose. I wasn't happy like looking at them having them and wearing them didn't bring me great joy and i just felt like why am i collecting these things if i don't need them certainly and if they aren't bringing me joy and that's kind of how i felt i'm also in a stage where i am loving fragrance if you watch my channel it used to be me spending all my extra money on luxury bags well i have enough i also have enough fragrance but i feel like <laughs> fragrance is a, like a scaled down version of something that i can indulge but I got in over my head. I was buying too much. I was receiving from brands and I was keeping so many things for the wrong reasons. So moving forward, I only want to add fragrances that I love. No matter if I am gifted them, if I pay for them myself, I don't want to collect necessarily. I want to have things that serve a purpose. And that's in my life overall. Once you have what you need and what you want, sometimes the value of those things is not the same as what you thought going into it. Like luxury bags used to be like everything. I would love getting more and more and more. And then I realized like none of this crap actually matters. It's literally just a thing. And I don't value those things anymore. So I'm kind of in that space with fragrance. And I feel like that just happens the more mature you get and you realize that these things don't matter. Now, while they don't matter per se, I still like them, but I only want to get fragrances that I need. I don't need to have three florals that all smell similar. So that's kind of what happened. So I sold a lot, I gave a lot away, and then I bought a lot, but I am moving closer to having a fragrance collection that is specifically curated to my nose and not just what's popular, what's in, what everybody else is getting. So, okay, the first fragrance I got rid of a while ago is Chance Eau de Toilette, Eau Tendre. I believe. It's basically the pink liquid. I gave this fragrance to my cousin because at the time it was very similar to the next fragrance that I will talk about. This Chance fragrance is beautiful. It's a Chanel fragrance. It's, it's stunning. It's just, it doesn't do anything for me. It's a pretty citrusy floral. It's very feminine, very youthful. It's beautiful. But y'all know my fragrances either need to be sexy and heavy or very effervescent and so like they need to be different. So this fragrance just didn't stand out enough to me. And I also want to preface this, I guess, by saying just because I'm speaking about the reasons as to why I got rid of these fragrances doesn't mean that I don't like them. Doesn't mean that I am downing you if you have these scents and you love them. It's just they don't do anything for me anymore. So I don't want you guys to think like I'm bashing you. I owned these all at one point. I can appreciate them, but it doesn't mean that I need them. And that's just, that's just who what it is. The next scent is bond number nine, Madison Square Park, I believe. It's the pink bottle with the green cap. Now, I originally got rid of my chance because I said Madison Square Park was similar, and then I ended up getting rid of Madison Square Park. It's not that I don't like that one, it just wasn't unique enough. Um, it's a pretty floral, citrusy, green, fresh scent. Very fresh, green, and floral. I could see myself possibly owning 
using it again, but there's nothing about it that's like unique enough that I need it in my collection. I think I have enough fresh florals. Love that scent so much, but it just wasn't a necessity, so I did get rid of that. The next scent that I got rid of is Vaughn number nine. I love New York for Earth Day. I got rid of that scent because it just didn't do anything for me. And you know what, I actually bought that just because I really loved Bond Number no. 9 at the time. And I'll just be honest, I was in a phase where like, I wanted to grow my collection. I liked the scent and I just felt like I needed to have it. <sighs> Thank God for growth because I don't feel like I need to have things anymore just to collect them, to say that I have them. I actually want to enjoy them. So that is a very green animalic <laughs> scent. It can kind of smell like cat pee. So a lot of people don't like it too much. Uh, I did enjoy that one, but I didn't use it as much as I should. Um, I don't even know if Bond Number no. 9 actually sells that fragrance anymore, but yeah. That was a scent that I just kept to keep, and I don't want to do that anymore, so she had to go. The next scent that I got rid of is Bond Number no. 9 Fire Island, and this is like a coconut fresh. It literally smells like suntan lotion. Once again, I loved it when I purchased it. I loved it at the time. It fit in my collection because I the moment I was growing my Bond Number no. 9 collection, but I realized that that wasn't important for me. I got rid of that. I don't necessarily have any coconut beachy scents at the moment, but I do plan on getting one uh, this summer. Yeah, it's not a bad scent, but it literally smells like sunscreen. And there's nothing necessarily sweet and unique about it. It just smells like sunscreen. So that had to go. And the last Bond scent I had to get rid of was Park Avenue South. This is a scent that I remember getting while I was on YouTube. I mean, that's pretty much how my Bond fragrance collection started. And this I remember smelling like apple a juicy green apple. The only problem was that the longevity was horrible. And hey, y'all know, for a fragrance to have such weak longevity, it has to be $100 or less, or be really unique and special so that it doesn't matter. Like Louis Vuitton Le Jour Celeb does not have the best longevity, but it's so unique to me and I love it. And citrus fragrances don't tend to be the most long lasting, but the Bon Number no. 9 Park Avenue South, no man. So she had to go. I think I sold that quite a while ago. It just wasn't doing anything for me and it was too expensive and it was just sitting. And it wasn't like special because someone gave it to me that I cared about. So I decided to get rid of it. Sorry. <laughs> My next scent is Proenza Schuler, Arizona. And I got rid of that because I bought another fragrance, Chanel Misia, that smelled very similar. Now Proenza Schuler, I still enjoyed. That is one of those scents that is just classic and old school. It smells of iris, AKA lipstick. <laughs> iris scents tend to smell like lipstick to me. Now, someone that I do really love did buy that for me, but I just couldn't justify having two in my collection. And I did keep that scent for like over five years, I think. Beautiful bottle, very underrated. I don't think they even sell that fragrance anymore. So yeah, but I couldn't justify having two scents that smell so much alike. I think that's where I am in my collection now. Like I said, I don't want to just hoard just to say I have things or to look at them because they're pretty. They actually have to serve a purpose and I couldn't justify having two, so. It had to go. Next fragrance that I got rid of is another one that someone special to me gave. That was Giorgio Armani C Passion, or however you pronounce it. That was the red bottle. I got rid of that because it was almost halfway done. I wasn't using it, and I just don't want to have clutter. Like, I really want to redo my fragrances and put a like ladder shelf up and make it look really pretty so that I can display them. But when I do that, I only want to have fragrances in my collection that I love. So I did pass up on that. I do like that scent, but, and I'll just be honest, the more you get into niche fragrances, designer scents can sometimes just not be unique enough. And I think that's also where I am in my collection. Not to say that like I'm a niche snob because I still love a good designer or luxury fragrance, but the more you experience different scent notes that are more complex and robust, you kind of set the standard for yourself to be a little higher. And so that 
that Giorgio Armani C Passion does nothing for me anymore. I did use half the bottle though. I really, really loved it, but yeah, I was ready to get rid of it. So I did get rid of that. Okay, the next scent that I parted with is, ooh, one that I really loved initially, and this is Diptyque's O Rose. I think Diptyque O Rose was one of the first rose fragrances in my collection. I never knew I liked rose so much until I smelled that years ago. And I remember my mom bought that for me and it was so special, it was so pretty. But then I got more into fragrances and I started using that as a room spray. And that's when I knew like, girl, it's time to get rid of that, you have a problem. You have clearly ascended into greater rose fragrances overall. That one just wasn't doing it and that's what it was. It's a beautiful fresh rose. I had the Eau de Toilette version. Freshly cut stems, that's exactly what it smelled like. Rose stems that is. But it just didn't do enough for me so I had to part with it. It was hard because I love that scent but I literally have so many beautiful rose fragrances that have more depth. A fresh cut rose serves no purpose in my collection and that's just what it is. I think I'm more so now kind of defining my own scent profile that really brings me happiness and like a one note scent just doesn't do it so she had to go. My next two fragrances are actually from Zara. They are Zara Yellow Velvet and Zara Apple Juice. I purchased them at the same time because one of my girls told me that they are great mixed with Baccarat. I do agree. They made Baccarat a little more palatable for everyday wear but I didn't feel like it was necessary having two fragrances take up that much space in my cabinet to simply mix. I'm also not really a mixing girl. I just feel like I have to spray too much on to mix and I don't like over spraying so I'm not into over spraying or mixing so I had to give those two Zara fragrances up. They're very simple uh, and beautiful but they don't have enough depth on their own for me to wear on their own so yeah they got decluttered. The next fragrance I got rid of, Shocker Chloe Eau de Parfum. This is a fragrance that I always spoke about really enjoying but the bottle tarnishes and I know there's a story behind Chloe Eau de Parfum about like the ridges symbolize the pillars of some era of some building in some country but that bottle tarnishes and once it tarnishes it stinks and I don't like touching it so I never use my Chloe fragrance. Now I still do have a rollerball that I love. I think I'll eventually end up getting Bond Number no. 9 Gold Coast because to me those fragrances smell very similarly. I just can't deal with tarnishing. I'm not about to tarnish a bottle. I don't care how, I, I just, I don't have the time or the energy or care enough. So uh, that was a fragrance that I was happy to declutter because ever since getting that fragrance, how it tarnished has grinded my gears and I wish they would just not use real silver, but I understand why they do. But she had to go like with the quickness. My next scent is Hugo Boss, the private accord scent for her. And this was a very coconut-y flower floral, white floral scent. I wore it on my birthday a few years ago and that was it. <laughs> like literally I haven't worn it in a few years. I have probably only worn it a few times in life since getting it and yeah, I think I used to buy fragrance just because I liked it, but I didn't necessarily love it. And because I was buying so much, they were just sitting. So now I really just want things that I love. That scent is still beautiful, but I don't need it. I'm learning to appreciate things for what they are without needing to have it myself. And that has definitely come with maturity. <laughs> My next fragrance, Prada La Femme. Woo, this is a beautiful, strikingly bold and intense tuberose. I never wore this fragrance though. That's like an office, church, fancy, dressed up event type of gal. But really, once I got the Armani Privé Rouge Malachite, all the other tuberose fragrances in my collection, I kind of gave a side eye to because that tuberose is so well blended and creamy and dreamy. It's like, why do I need a Prada La Femme when I have Rouge Malachite? And I hate to say it like that because it sounds like I'm like a luxury or a niche snob, but it's really not about that. There are still fragrances like Moogler's Angel Nova that I love that are not not niche, they're not $300 and $200, but they just have to be unique to my collection. And if there are two that smell similar, but one smells better, 
the other one can go. That's what happened to Prada La Femme. Not a bad scent, a beautiful tuberose. I also know tuberose isn't for everyone, but I love tuberose, but she had to go. My next fragrance, oh, Valentino Donna Born in Roma. And if you guys saw my video where I reviewed the Donna Born in Roma Intense, I told you that I would be getting rid of the original Donna Born in Roma because the intense version was so much better, deeper and sexier. And so I just couldn't justify having both. If I could have fragrance fill every wall of this room, I would have kept them, but I can't. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. So I had to get rid of one. So my original Donna Born Aroma had to go. Still love that scent and think it's beautiful. I just, I didn't need it. I didn't need it. <laughs> My next scent is Dolce & Gabbana La Temperance 14. Now I'll be honest with you, I've probably used that fragrance once. It was a recommendation from one of my friends, Brian, on Instagram. I actually loved it, but it was missing a sweet, depthy note. It was a very, like, I think woodsy fragrance. I think it just reminded me of fall. It was very woodsy and fresh, but it was like a depthy scent. It didn't have anything sweet and sexy in it. Now, I could have mixed it with something, but like I said, I'm not a mixer. So because I hadn't used that scent too much, I had to get rid of it. Um, I only paid like 20 bucks for it so that didn't really I didn't feel like it was like a struggle to get rid of it but I realized like girl you are not using the scent it's time to let it go my next scent <laughs> Marc Jacobs perfect intense and I got this because I was out with Kendra one day we were in Target and a woman walked by and smelled so good and she said she had on Marc Jacobs perfect so later that day we went to the mall and we got well she got perfect Kendra got perfect and I got perfect intense because I tend to like an intense scent. But that scent did nothing for me. As pretty as the bottle was, as whimsical, it just did nothing for me. So she had to go. It turned nutty on me and I'm not a fan of smelling nutty. So I got rid of that and it didn't pain me at all because something about it never really truly worked for me, but I never wanted to just get rid of it. So I did sell it and thankfully she went to a better Better place. She didn't die, but she went to a better place. And then I got rid of Juliet Has a Gun Midnight Oud. And I got rid of this because it smelled like something else I had in my collection. So I believe this was like a rosy oud. I think it reminded me of um, Tiziana Terenzi Gold Rose Oud. Very intense, a little peppery, a little fresh, a little sweet, but overwhelmingly masculine and oud. I love the Tiziana Terenzi version more and that one lasts longer. So the Juliet has a gun had to go. And I didn't mind because I rarely wore that one anyway. My next scent was Montal's Mookalot. That smelled like synthetic strawberry, like a plastic plastic baby doll. I loved it though. There was something so interesting about it smelling so synthetically of strawberries, but the longevity was horrible and I couldn't justify that. Lovely scent. I would love to find something that smells similar. A lot of people don't like Montauk scents because they do smell a bit synthetic, but something about them I just love when they're interesting enough. So I would like to find another plasticky strawberry scent that lasts longer because that I did like, but I just couldn't justify it if it dispersed from my skin in an hour. That's just not worth it. <laughs> I also got rid of two House of Siage scents. The first was Holiday and that smelled like pine and white florals and it just reminded you of Christmas. I love that scent but House of Siage longevity is horrible. I will link a video I did down below talking about how I think House of Siage is overrated because I don't find any scent from House of Siage to have great longevity. There are probably five scents that I think are beautiful, but I'm not spending upwards of three and four hundred dollars on a fragrance that's not even going to last a few hours. I'm just not doing it. So I had to get rid of Holiday. And there are a lot of House of Siage scents that are easily duped or that exist in other brands that have better longevity and a cheaper price. I don't know what House of Siage has going on, but I'm not here for it. I also got rid of Tierra. Tierra was like a floral nutty. And like I said, I don't like the smell of nutty scents on me. They just don't do anything for me. Beautiful, classic, floral type of scent, but too nutty, so she had to go. I don't even remember what the longevity was like on that one because the scent 
I'll be honest, that one was 50% off online, so I bought it because I was like, oh, I wanna try House of Siash because everybody was raving about it and it sucked. So I definitely sold that and don't regret it at all. <laughs> And then the last fragrance that I got rid of was Victor and Raw Good Fortune. And I actually gave that to a subscriber because it just didn't smell interesting enough. I tried to make myself like it. It was jasmine forward, but a little screechy smelling. It wasn't smooth enough. It was very simple from initial spray to dry down. It didn't change a lot. Um, it just didn't do it for me. So I gifted that to a better home. <laughs> so sometimes I will actually sell my fragrances if you're wondering. Other times I will just give them away because especially if something is gifted by a brand, like the Victor and Roth was. I don't want to profit off of it so I gifted that to a subscriber and yeah hopefully she loves it. So those are all the babies that have since found new homes you guys. As you can see this was kind of like a trip down memory lane in my fragrance scent history. Um, I literally am in a place now where every item in my collection I think is something that I truly love and cherish. I no longer want to just collect for the sake of collecting and being able to say I have this or I have 50 fragrances or I have 70. I truly want to love what I own and so those are the only fragrances moving forward that I will get except for the um, Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush. I am getting that for the shoe alone because it looks like a ballet slipper but I know that going into it so it's okay I don't have expectations I probably won't ever spray it <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down below what you thought do you have some of these fragrances have you parted with them how do you feel are you someone who loves to collect and it doesn't matter if you wear your fragrances or are you starting to be more like me where it's like you only want to have things you love and truly use I'd love to know love you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in in the next video. Bye!